Hi, Shauna Karish here with another Ask Shauna Answer. Um, this question comes from Nancy, and she says, my ex racer, Thoroughbred, uh, he, she wants him to enjoy trailer loading and not get so anxious and worried. He is 12 and definitely knows how to load, but gets so worried. He will not get in, or he will get in, but not with his back legs. Okay, so really what that means, he's not really getting in. <laughs> getting in is all the way in. So um, what, you know, and being a thoroughbred, I mean, there could be a lot of association with the racing, you know, who knows where the behavior really comes from. And, and frankly, that part doesn't matter as what as much. Um, po using the positive reinforcement is going to make a huge difference in his confidence and his boldness and his relaxation and in his desire to get in the trailer. But it's also up to us as the trainers to kind of raise that criteria. You need to raise it slow, but you also sometimes have to say, well, now I need you to go a little bit further. So what I would do, and there is on the, um, on my blog, I have so much stuff on my blog. <laughs> on the blog, there is some trailer loading where I took Bugs, who was one is my horse, who also didn't like trailer loading. And it's just they're little rough real-time sessions, but you see him kind of in just a few sessions. It's like 40 minutes total work, I think. Um, get from not really wanting to go in the trailer, looking off, not wanting to go, to loading himself in the trailer. So I think that will give you a nice visual, nice thing to watch. But utilizing the positive reinforcement will help a lot. I think using targets. So doing the um, handheld target and then shifting to a stationary target, which you'll see in the, the little free video on the blog, those things kind of help you to, to build up his confidence. He knows what to do with the target. And a lot of times that when he sees it, he starts thinking, oh, I just want to touch the target. I like the target. And kind of sometimes the trailer can become more of an incidental and not so much the focus. Also, I suggest as much as you can. So use a positive reinforcement, use the clicker, use the target. Um, but another thing, I know sometimes in certain situations you can't have them just loose, but ideally if you could work them loose. But if you do need to work them on a halter and lead rope, try not to pull with the halter and lead rope. Try not to just keep that, have that to keep him from running away, but not to pull and go him into the trailer. I don't know if you are or you aren't. I don't really know how exactly you're working it. But um, that's one of the things I found that sometimes as you start to pull, they start to go, Oh no, and they get all defensive. Now down the road, they're gonna to need to learn how to, I think anyway, because I want my horse, if there's a fire here, I want him loading with whoever is in the middle of that mess, you know? So I don't want him thinking, no, I only do it without my halter, without pressure. I want him to understand what the pressure means, but in order to build that confidence, I would, um, I would look for the, letting him make the choice, not feeling like he's coerced and being pulled, but totally say, it's okay. You can come in, you can not go in, it's up to you. But me and the target and the reinforcement is up here. So you start to stall, teaching about the clicker, the target, and then move to the trailer. Also, another thing that I help, I, I've noticed really helps is to do it in really small increments. So just say, hey, just put a foot on the trailer, even back up to a, a different, to where he, back to where you know he's going to be and have him you know target and put a foot on the ramp and you know feed him say that's good that's all we're doing today you know so he kind of starts realizing if he just gives a little bit it might be over quicker so then as you get him you know and you get those two feet in you know reinforce him a bit and then but and make sure that you're always the one who initiates the going away so you're the one who initiates the back out you do not reinforce him if he initiates the back out and then as I think as you keep going with the target and looking for a little bit more and just be patient, just wait them out. Leave that lead rope loose. If he backs out a little bit, don't worry about it. You just wait and you go back in there and you're gonna see at some point he's gonna go, ooh, I really want what's in that trailer. So he'll make the decision and he'll go and then you'll get to where you can actually close the door and close it up. Again, that video is going to, those videos, it's a few of them, I think will really help you to kind of see and visualize that as you go. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're always, individual so sometimes you have to adapt it a little bit or change it a little bit but you'll see that they that he'll make um, his own changes and his own choice one other thing I wanted to point out you think about through traditional training where there's no food in it they um, you know there is there or no positive reinforcement in it there's nothing in it really for them they can get in the trailer and then we close it up and sometimes you know, people don't drive so well, you know, or whatever happens, you know, you don't always know that part, but there's nothing in it for them. By utilizing the positive reinforcement, you actually put something in it for him. And then he, something that he values and he wants, and he becomes more invested, more engaged in the training process. 
and this helps you, he wants to get to that better outcome as well. So it really makes a huge difference in him mentally, which then changes your progress to, to a whole different picture. Also, one of the things to keep in mind, sometimes, I mean, people forget that driving is really important. I, there's a gal who used to come to our farm and take lessons, and she would always say, I don't know why my horse never wants to get in the trailer. Well, she'd come flying down our half mile gravel road, you know, at 40 miles an hour. You're like, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's the driving. So sometimes the adversives are just getting in the trailer or getting in alone in the trailer, but sometimes it's the driving. So remember to drive really slow and, and take those corner stops and starts really slow. You might be doing that already, but that's just for everybody's sake. <laughs> anyway, so I hope this helped you out. Go check out those videos. If you have more questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at AskShauna.com. Until next time, enjoy getting your horse on target.